Well, of course, the Fed left rates on hold this week, signalling a March cut might be too early, while locally inflation retreated to a two-year low in the December quarter as food and fuel prices increased at a slower pace, fanning hopes the next move by the Reserve Bank will also be an interest rate cut. For more on what lies ahead for the currency market, Lachlan Meekin from Go Markets joins me now. Hi, Lachlan. Good to see you. Hi, Julia. Let's start, of course, with the, the key US dollar, particularly after those comments from Jay Powell that uh, it is likely to be too early to look at cuts next month. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting reaction in the US dollar. It's, um, he pretty much ruled out March, but if you look at the Fed fund futures, they're still pricing in around 40%. So the market doesn't fully believe him, it seems, and, and the dollar reacted um, accordingly. Where, so we had a little pop. Um, and then it's, it's had a bit of a dip last night, but that, I think that dip, a lot of that dip was with uh, following yields down. Um, and I think as well, one of the reason yields have gone down this week is uh, the, the, the regional banking woes. I think we had, if you look at the KRX index, compared to the 10-year yield, it's pretty much in line for the last few days. So that, that's obviously weighed on the dollar as well. Um, going forward, I think the NFP tonight's a big one. Um, this will be a real test to see if uh, the narrative that uh, Jerome was uh, spinning on Wednesday is going to hold pat or not. So um, we'll see how it goes. I think there might be a little bit of weakness in the US dollar for the next few days, but I, I really can't see how those dovish um, cut predictions can't unwind in the next couple of months because um, March is looking very unlikely for that cut. Yeah, and you make a good point about uh, the market waiting for the jobs and numbers as well, particularly after bond yields dropped to their lowest level so far this year. Let's take it over to what we saw from uh, the Bank of England. Of course, uh, no change there. What sort of moves did you see from the pound? Uh, there's a, there was a little pop in it. I think mostly it was US dollar weakness that did it. Um, the FX markets have all been pretty range bounds and, and low volatility 2024 so far. But we did see it bounce from the bottom of its recent roll of 2024 range to the top. Um, I think the Bank of England, they, they, were, they were more dovish than the last meeting, but probably more hawkish than people expected, and especially with a couple of the, the members voting for a hike, which I think took... Um, the market by surprise a little bit and there was a little bit of pushback on cut expectations too so i think that'll be the narrative of central banks certainly for this quarter there's this pushback on um some pretty dovish expectations from the rates markets and uh, you know the bank of england's feeling is priced in for a june cut but um but i think it's more likely we'll be see to august and i think you'll see that from probably the rba next week as well well, indeed, the RBA very much in focus and they're changing the way they meet as well. So we all have to get our heads around that. Uh, it does seem, particularly when you look at that cooler inflation picture that we had, that uh, perhaps the RBA is done. Quite a big move in the Aussie when we had that inflation print this week. Yes, the dip. Um, the Aussie dollar's under a bit of pressure, but technically that 65, 25 to 65 level against the US is held pretty um, pretty firm and that, that was the two month lows. So I think it was set back into December and November last year. And it's it's been tested a few times this year and held. So it's looking good for a technical point of view there. Um, I think the RBA next week, obviously we're not gonna get a cut, but the market is pricing looking around 20%. So if we don't get that cut, um, depending on the statement too, I think if the tightening bias, bias so that, that'll be the main driver of the Aussie dollar next week, whether that um, last paragraph mentions tightening or if it, if it mentions a, a cutting in the future or, or, or neither. So um, the statement will be big, but I've got a feeling the RBA may get rid of the tightening bias, but they certainly won't indicate any cuts anytime soon. That's that's my prediction. I think we'll see the Aussie dollar a little bit higher next week um, until the US dollar, until those US yields turn around again. And I think the US dollar will start uh, getting a bit more bids at that stage. What else is on your radar currency-wise, Lachlan? I mean, we've been seeing a lot of focus on the yen too, particularly as we look to perhaps the Bank of Japan moving away from that ultra looser policy. Yeah, the yen's an interesting one. There was a fairly hawkish um, summary from the Bank of Japan earlier this week that saw uh, it, it rally a, a little bit. Um, and it is playing catch up to those, if you look at the US 10 minus the Japanese 10 yields on the US dollar yen chart, it's, it, the gap has opened up a bit. So. I'm not surprised the price is coming down on that pair to, to catch up to that yield differential. Um, it's it's all going to depend on the Bank of Japan. There's been some mixed figures out of Japan lately, though, so I don't think anything will happen in March from them. But, um, I mean, it's going to happen eventually, and I think that you, you've seen that 
kind of bottoming, bottoming out of the yen against a lot of pairs of where it's you know around that 150 level against the US, uh, 97 or so against the Aussie. Um, I think if you want to buy the yen, probably buy against the Aussies the, uh, the best bet. Um, it's looking like there's a lot of resistance there and there's really fresh air below that chart uh, support-wise as well. 